always think that public ownership would actually improve the situation? Good afternoon, Nana. Well, um, I think it would definitely improve the situation because what we have right now with the privatised water industry in England is a completely uh, crazy situation where since 1989, we, the British public, have been paying out £2 billion a year to shareholders. Um, the, the water companies have racked up a debt of £53 billion. Um, we've got 400,000 incidents of sewage going into our rivers and seas. Um, we've got leakage levels of around 25%, so around a quarter of our water is leaking away every day. Um, our water bills have gone up by 40%. Privatisation was supposed to bring them down. Um, so really the track record of these privatised water companies that we have here in England um, is absolutely atrocious. They're treating the British public like cash machines and they're treating our rivers and seas like sewers and it has to stop. Very great. That's a great analogy, actually. What about um, the cost of the taxpayer, though? Because even though they are obviously uh, private companies, if they go badly wrong, we're going to be the ones that pick up the tab, right? Yeah, that's right. So what I think we have to do is look at what is normal in other countries, because this uh, situation in England is very unique. We sold off all of our assets as well as the rights to provide our water. So we have a handful of monopolies. Um, so you don't get any choice, by the way, as a consumer, as a customer. Um, the water comes out of your tap. Uh, you have one set of pipes. It is a monopoly. Um, and that means, you know, the normal rules of the market don't apply. But we can look at other countries to see how to do this in a sensible way. For example, in Scotland, they didn't privatise their water. Their water is in public ownership. That means that for every single household in Scotland, £72 extra every year has been going into the infrastructure, dealing with things like leaks, uh, stopping things like sewage spills. Um, so if England had done the same as Scotland, we would have spent an extra £28 billion on our infrastructure and we could have really improved our system, brought down bills, uh, cleaned up our rivers and seas and actually done the job that water companies are supposed to do. Of course, there's obviously the, the, the downside to health as well. Kat Hobbs, thank you very much uh, for giving us that, uh, that, that bit of information. She's the founder and director of We Own It. Right, I'm also joined by Sir John Redwood, MP for Wokingham. Uh, Sir John, thank you for joining me. What do you think? Because the real issue here is that companies are dumping waste into our rivers. Now, I know there are rules as to how far you can dump and, and so on and so forth, but... Should they actually be allowed to be doing this? No, of course they shouldn't. Uh, and the regulator is toughening up uh, with a lot of encouragement from myself and many other parliamentarians. Uh, the standards are not good enough and we need a very major investment program to make sure that when there's excess water in the system, they don't simply flood our rivers with dirty water uh, in a way which is totally unacceptable. But what we have to remember is that when we had a nationalised industry, it was even worse. We, we had a reputation of having many more dirty beaches than the rest of Europe, uh, because then this was a very regular occurrence and it also spilled over uh, in our leading coastal places. And there was a major clean up of beaches, which has represented some progress. We clearly need a lot more investment money going into this industry. It was always starved of cash when it had to compete against the health service and schools as part of the nationalised system. Uh, the idea was to liberate it to raise much more money. The regulator has in recent years been stopping it raising so much money by very strict price controls. Uh, we need to review how much they can now raise and how quickly they can do the, the very big works that are needed to accommodate a, a greatly increasing population. But isn't it a conflict of interest for these, uh, for the water industry to be privatised in this fashion? Because surely it's a little bit like, I would say, energy, that it's something that we, the public, should own. Maybe we did a bad job before, but we must make sure this time we do a good job in ownership of it. But surely we should protect it because it is obviously life. Well, we do own it through our pension funds and through our savings and investments. Uh, we own it collectively and we can have choices as to whether we wish to have a shareholding in it through uh, the way that people hold their long-term savings. Uh, most importantly, it means that the people who um, own the businesses have to make their own assessment of risk. And if they get it wrong, 
uh, then it would be at their expense rather than at the taxpayer expense. But I must stress that one of the main reasons that encouraged us to privatize the water industry uh, in the 1980s was the dreadful record of the industry uh, in terms of keeping our, our beaches and our rivers clean. And also there were some incidents over water supply. And it was thought that an arm's length industry with tougher regulatory standards and access to far more capital would do a better job. It has done a bit better job. The job is not nearly good enough at the moment. I think growing population is part of the pressure on the system. And it does mean, I'm afraid, that we're going to need to dig up a lot of streets and have quite a lot of disruptive works in order to put in the extra capacity which a growing population clearly needs. Well, well, Sir John Redwood MP, thank you very much for talking to us. He's a Conservative MP for Workingham.